Next guest is a young comedian who's making his very first appearance on The Tonight Show. He's originally from New York City, and he's, uh... <laughs> Same guy who knows about your record. Uh, he's worked a lot of small clubs, both in New York and Los Angeles. Would you welcome him, please? Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry! Hey, well, good evening. Boy, this is so exciting for me. I'm so excited to be here. This is really a big thrill. See, I'm originally from Long Island. They mentioned that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And I just moved out here. Of course, you know, the weather out here is uh, very different from back on the East Coast. But one thing is the weather reports are exactly the same. Weather reports are the same wherever you go in the country. They always have the guy comes out, he shows you the highs, the lows, the fronts. Then they show you the satellite photo. This is real helpful. A photograph of the Earth from 10,000 miles away. Can you tell if you should take a sweater or not from that shot? <laughs> I have no idea. If I really need to know the weather, I watch Romper Room. The kiddie show. They lay it on the line. If the little Willie guy in the wall gets a raincoat, I know what's happening. <laughs> People will travel all over the world, you know, to get into the weather that they like. Skiers will go to Switzerland for the snow. I was in Switzerland one time. Beautiful country, great country, and interesting, 500 years without a war. Very impressive, also very lucky for the Swiss Army. I don't know if you've ever seen that little Swiss Army knife, it's not much of a weapon. <laughs> Corkscrews, bottle openers, come on. They've had some great picnics, don't get me wrong. If somebody attacks you, what do you pull out, your nail clippers? Come on, buddy, let's go. You get past me, the guy in back of me, he's got a spoon. So I came back from Switzerland, you know, and I had to go through customs, and these, these people are very efficient. They ask you questions. The guy says to me, you got any plants? I said, no. Any alcohol? No. The guy actually says to me, any drugs? Now, is this an effective technique for this guy? <laughs> what, are we on the honor system now? <laughs> is he catching incredibly stupid people like this? <laughs> any drugs? Bingo, you got me. <laughs> I don't know how you did it. <laughs> got back to the station. You know, I got very confused driving around over there. I get confused driving around here, too. Intersections are so big. You know, every lane has got its own thing. You know, you pull up to the light, it's no right turn, no U-turn, no left turn, left turn only, no U-turn. My favorite sign, you pull up to the light and it says, left turn, okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't you like that one little personal touch? <laughs> it's like they're saying to you, left turn, Okay. <laughs> We're not crazy about you making the left. It's okay. Pretty much make it, get it over with. <laughs> but they're involved with you in the turn. Don't you think that's important? Left turn? Okay, okay, left turn. They should get more involved. Sounds like right turn. Why not? <laughs> You turn, enjoy it. <laughs> Make that Yui, go ahead. Oh, I had a horrible experience when I was driving the other day. My car broke down. Oh, isn't, it's just the worst. You're driving along, your car breaks down. What do you do? You pretend like you know what you're doing. You get out of the car, you walk around the front of the car, you open up the hood, you look in. <laughs> what are you looking for? What's ever wrong, you can't fix it. <laughs> you stand there hoping to find something incredibly obviously wrong. Something so simple, even you can handle it. A giant on-off switch, on-off. <laughs> these are the amazing things. That's part of my job, tell you these amazing things. There's a lot of amazing things in the world. You can find them yourself. Just look in the Guinness Book of World Records. Some incredible things in there. Have you ever seen the guy who's got the record for fattest man in the world? It's an amazing thing. Bob Hughes. 1,400 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, the man has let himself go. <laughs> I used to even feel bad, you know, talking about him on stage, because, you know, somebody, you could be, but you could weigh 1,000 pounds and go, he's not talking about me. <laughs> this is a man with a serious weight problem. <laughs> I 
always hoped that someday Bob could get it together, you know? Go on a diet. Take off 200 pounds. It doesn't make a hell of a dent. And if you're a friend of his, what are you gonna say to him? You know, you look great, Bob. What are you down to, 1,200 now? You're a rail, baby, look at you. And what can he possibly say in response? And you know, I feel terrific. <laughs> Look at these pants, remember how tight they used to be? Look at this. I gotta get all new clothes now. First time. Jerry Seinfeld. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Bob. We'll be back in a moment. Tomorrow night at 9.30 on NBC, following the very popular show Cheers, is another very popular young guy, very funny guy, Jerry Seinfeld with his own show called The Seinfeld Chronicles. And he's gonna be appearing also at the Orpheum Theater in Minneapolis, June 9th, and at the Circles. Hi, Minneapolis! Yeah, yeah hooray! Thank you. <laughs> 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 he's becoming a pep rally all of a sudden. <laughs> and he will be in Minneapolis, dear, June 9th, and he'll be at the Circle Star Theater in San Carlos also. No cheers for San Carlos, huh? <laughs> On June 23rd. Would you welcome Jerry Seinfeld? <laughs> Obviously, there's a lady from Minneapolis going to come see you. Got a big, big All right, in Minneapolis. That's, only need uh, another 999 people. Yeah, so sold out. Tomorrow night's the the big night. Huh? Yeah, tomorrow night. I How can't about believe this? Prime time, NBC. How did this all happen? Five years ago, would you thought, hey, that's going to happen? No, no. I've been I've been doing this show for uh, ten years. I guess know. so. And uh, it's really a big thrill. I'd like to thank you, actually, for, mm. you know, putting me on all these years. And Because for a long time, this is all I was doing, is this show and the little clubs. And that's uh, no, a really exciting break. This is just kind of a little nighttime throwaway. Now you're in the big, big time. Yeah, wow. yeah. Now, you, you set the show in, the setting is New York, right? It's in New York, which is where I live uh, right. some of the time. I was just back there. The new thing in New York now is these... Uh, people's radios get stolen out of the car a lot, so they have these no-radio signs... Have you seen this? I've heard about it. No radio. I've also seen no radio, nothing in trunk, because they're breaking into the trunks. <laughs> no radio, no nothing. This is one absolutely true. I saw this. No radio, thank you. No radio, thank you? We're going to attempt being polite to the crooks now and say, you know, sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Crack Addict, sir. But, you know. <laughs> Or not all. Yeah, appreciate your consideration <laughs> in this matter. Yeah. Maybe they could put a sign out there, this is not a car, or yeah. something like that. But they really do, no radio. They no... break in the radios. The criminals, I don't know. Didn't it's... they have it on some new cars? If you take the radio out, it's inoperative. Yeah. Some manufacturers have done that. I don't know whether that's for real, but that's what they say. I've lost probably about eight, ten of these things. I would like once them just steal the car and leave the radio in yeah. the parking spot. <laughs> Just to break it up a little, you know. <laughs> I love when they have criminals on TV, especially these really wild, like the, uh, you know, they have a terrorist or a mass murderer. The guy's always covering up his face. You ever notice this when he's, when they're hauling him of in? Of course. Well, what is this man's reputation that he has to worry about protecting it? I mean, what, what is he up for, a big job promotion? Out of the office or something? Yeah, interview? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm afraid, uh, afraid the boss is going to catch it and go, isn't that Johnson from sales? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I always like when you have somebody like that, as terrible as it is, somebody goes berserk and wipes out, they always interview the neighbors. Yeah. And what do they always say? He was kind of a loner. He was kind of yeah. a loner. <laughs> he was always kind of quiet, kept by himself. Yeah. Now you know why. Well, he was yeah. firing a He's lot. He's wiped so out we, all yeah. of his friends, naturally. <laughs> so, <laughs> but when, you, when you're... You know, firing, I think it's hard for people to get to know you. <laughs> <laughs> hard to shake hands yeah. when you got a, a gun and yell. I'm no thought of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, have you been planning on the show a long time? I know you're yeah. probably involved in the writing and everything. Yeah, I wrote it with uh, Larry David, who's a comedian from New York. Yeah. And uh, neither of us had ever written a TV show before. 
and uh, they, they let us do it. NBC, is, I have to say, was wonderful, uh, letting us really do the type of comedy and right. the type of show that we wanted to do. Because you do, mostly, a lot of observation. You, yeah. you comment on things and people and what's happened and the things that are socially relevant or not so socially no, relevant. No, not so much on the news. Yeah. To me, the most amazing thing about the news is that whatever goes on in the world, it exactly fits the number of pages that they're using in the paper that day. <laughs> Interesting concept. I mean, I don't know. They, they must stand around after each edition going, I don't believe we just made it again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just filled it up. Yeah. <laughs> if one more thing happens, we're screwed. There's no more <laughs> in this paper. <laughs> We have a... You want to show the uh, a little uh, excerpt from this uh, show? Is this from the sure, first show now, Yes, it is from the... Yeah. No, this is from uh, another show, I think. But it needs it's a not little... from your show, you mean? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to see this the Donna Reed show. I mean, show. Oh, this is... Oh, I see. Show. <laughs> this is a scene... Uh, I go into a dry cleaner. That's basically it. That's the premise, folks. No, yeah. you, you can't go you wrong You can follow there. that. Watch the monitor here, folks. May I help you? Yeah, I picked up this shirt here yesterday. It's completely shrunk. There's absolutely no way I can wear it. When did you bring it in? What's the difference? Look at it. Do you see the size of this shirt? You got a receipt? I, I can't find a receipt. You should get the receipt. Look, forget about the receipt, all right? Even if I had the receipt, look at it. It's a hand puppet. <laughs> what am I gonna do with this? Yes, but how do I know we did the shirt? Well, what, what do you think? This is a little scam I have? I take this tiny shirt all over the city, conning dry cleaners out of money? In fact, forget the money. I don't even want the money. I just once would like to hear a dry cleaner admit that something was their fault. That's what I want. I want an admission of guilt. Maybe you ask for it to be washed. No, dry cleaned. Let me explain to you something, okay? With certain types of fabrics, different chemicals can react, causing... You shrunk it. You know you shrunk it. Just tell me you shrunk it. I shrunk it. <laughs> See, the whole problem with dry cleaning is that we all believe that this is actually possible. <laughs> They're, right? They're cleaning our clothes but they're not getting anything wet. It's all dry. I know there's gotta be some liquids back there, some fluids that they're using. There's no such thing as dry cleaning. When you get something on your shirt, you ever get something on your shirt and try and get it off like that? That's dry cleaning. I don't think that's what they're doing back there. They don't have 80 guys going, come on, hurry up. There's a lot of shirts today. Hey, nice clip. good stuff. Okay, I shrunk it. That's funny. I only get one to admit it. Yeah. So we try and uh, combine the stand-up, show how, you know, yeah. I'm just playing myself, and that's the and kind of thing. And step out and make some comments. Yeah. Wish you good luck with it, Jerry. Thank you. We'll take a break. We're coming right back. Our first guest is, uh, is a gentleman who's probably one of the top top Hollywood fitness trainers in America. Uh, uh, Hollywood fitness trainers in America or the fitness trainers of America that happens to live in the Hollywood area? Anyway, this is his book, ladies and gentlemen. It's called Health Wow. Would you please welcome Hollywood's top fitness trainer, Dick Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Dick Williams. Beautiful, aren't they? They're beautiful people, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you here, in the, in the book, you, it says in the back here, you've, you've trained some of Hollywood's top, top celebrities. Who are some of the folks you've worked with? Maybe people might know. Well, there's uh, Roger Crummis. Roger Crummis. No, I, uh, I don't know that name. Well, uh, he did a pilot for NBC a couple of years ago. Uh, I don't think they sold it, though, but... Uh, Okay, anybody we would know, maybe folks, people might know. Well, Phyllis Goober. Phyllis Goober? Uh, what was she, was she on a show? Well, she did Mannix. Oh, she was on a Mannix? Yeah. Mannix, certainly a fine, fine show. <laughs> All right, listen, um, well, why don't we get started? I know, you know, it's, I think it's kind of interesting that being a health expert and all, you're, you're smoking. You don't find that that... Oh, I, I know what you're saying, yeah. 
I've talked to some of the officials at the uh, cigarette industries, and they told me that uh, there's really no harm in smoking. Really? The tobacco people said that? <laughs> well, apparently they, they must know what they're talking about. All right, listen, why don't we... Uh, <laughs> where do you want to start first here? Well, uh, why don't we chalk up? Chalk up. Right, now, what does that mean exactly for the folks here? <laughs> well, that means we get a little chalk on our hands so we can handle the uh, equipment. Okay, go ahead. We'll chalk up. All right, we just... <laughs> You all right? Did you burn yourself? Uh, yeah, you want to hand me that towel over oh, there? Oh, sure. Yeah, but you don't want to... Pay. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. And now what? In your book here. Are you, are you all right? Stand back, I okay. don't want you to get hurt. <laughs> in the book, you say you... De <laughs> you develop all the equipment yourself, yet I notice... <laughs> this just looks like a rowing machine you'd buy at Sears. How is this different than, than the one you just buy over the Well, counter? when I bought this boat, uh, the Velcro was red, but I changed it to black. <laughs> Now, what's the trick here? Is there any secret to First, the rowing? the grips. They're mine. Oh, the grips are yours, too. Okay. What's the secret? Just row? Just row, breathe, and stay with it. Okay. Well, let's, let's see a demonstration here. Go All ahead. Right. Good. That was uh, secured in the floor there. Yeah. Listen, that's, even. that's probably a little complicated for a lot of them. Why don't we move to something simpler? Yeah. Uh, how about the bench press? Oh, here? yeah, that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> now, what are we going to be doing here? Oh, watch yourself. Are you, are you all right? Oh, watch it, watch it. Hang on, hang on. I, no, wait a minute. I, I, I think I see the problem. Hang on. All right, go ahead. Try it now. Try it now. Is that a little better for you? All right. All right. Now watch out. Are you going to spot me? Yeah, there's a good 20, 25 right. pounds on there. Be careful. All right, you got it? Now, what's the trick here? The well, breathing again? Keep your breath. Right. Pump up. Oh. Are you all right? Look, um... Maybe, maybe we should do this another time when you're not so nervous. But 